Uh, so the, the governor is stuck in traffic. Uh, we just got a word. So we're gonna move on and uh, I actually think that might work out well. We might actually get some more of his time. Um, so we're gonna continue with the program. It's, uh, it's my pleasure first to introduce Chris McIntyre from Xylem. Chris is the Senior Vice President of Xylem's uh, Analytic, uh, Analytics Value Center. Uh, Chris is uh, a real special guy. Um, he was uh, the President CEO of Nova Analytics a long time, uh, just a recognized expert in the whole analytical instrument space. Uh, he was President CEO of Nova before they got bought by ITT and now is part of, uh, part of Xylem. Uh, and uh, a graduate of this very institution. So Chris, welcome. Earl, thanks. Do I have to stretch anymore or are we good to just go? Yeah, you're good. All right, great. No okay. Uh, cool. Okay, so it's an absolute pleasure to be here today. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be back here at Northeastern. I'm uh, particularly proud to, to be here where, uh, where I got my MBA, so it, it's great. So thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, you know, the reason I'm, uh, I'm standing up here today uh, is due to the person that's going to come speak to you shortly. And so the business that I was uh, lucky to be part of that was started right here in Massachusetts, Nova Analytics, uh, 10 years ago we started this business. Uh, we grew this business up to get large enough to attract the attention of a number of large, well-respected industrial companies, one of which uh, was a company called ITT, and the senior person leading the charge at ITT to bring our analytical instrumentation business in was our, our speaker. And, and Gretchen McLean understood that analytical instrumentation combined with the pumping and treatment technologies that ITT had at the time could change the game, could make smarter infrastructure could really provide an opportunity to make water a little different and really get at all the things that this conference is talking about. And so ITT, under Gretchen's charge, led, led that through, uh, well, through 2008 and 2009, so some difficult financial times, and ultimately closed the deal in 2010, three years ago. And so I'm standing here today part of Xylem, which was subsequently spun off of ITT, a company solely focused on water. Our tagline is Let's Solve Water. And I'm standing here today, part of this cluster, because of those efforts. So it's my pleasure uh, to introduce to you uh, the president and CEO of Xylem, Gretchen McLean. Well, I will tell you, it was worth the wait. It was the right change. And I will tell you, even in this industry, flexibility, adaptability is what's important, that we can move, we can be quick. but clearly accountable is important as we think about the importance of the role of water and what we do and what we represent. So um, it was great. It was great to have him set the stage and have the governor tell us what he's thinking, what he wants to do here in the state, which I think is absolutely wonderful. Um, and I am thrilled to be here today, to be in a room of professionals, you know, water experts, distinguished guests, folks that really think about water in a way of not only for our health, which of course it's extremely important to our health, but thinking about what it means to a growing, first a maintaining economy, but to be able to have a growing economy. Water is absolutely a critical element, and we've got to make sure that we take respect for it. We think about it as a precious resource and that we collectively together move it forward. And it means all of us have to work together. And that's going to be the message. The message you've heard on several of the points today is about innovation. And I'm going to talk a little bit about in innovation, talk a little bit about education, talk about ultimately about leaders standing up and actually talking about what we need to do and having the confidence and the courage to make a change, which is what we all need to do and take the responsibility. So we're going to jump into um, some charts here. Let's see how do we pull these up. Bear with me for a minute. Right here. I don't know. I don't see them. I don't either. So okay, we won't worry about it. So we'll just talk. No charts, so we'll go. So a couple things I want to first talk about. Xylem. We, um, we talked about Xylem and a new company, and I want to talk a little bit about who we are and how we got started. Um, well, it is a new company. We were spun off from ITT about 18 months ago. But we have a long storied history. Um, we have been in the water industry for over 100 years. Um, ITT 
decided to spin their company into three pure plays. And I was fortunate enough to be able to take the leadership role as a CEO and be able to leave a, lead a public company. We are a pure play around water and wastewater. 90% of our revenue plays in water. And what's really exciting about being here in Massachusetts is a big portion of our business is right here. I think about our history. We started as a pump company, and a key part of our pumping business um, was started here in Gloucester. It was in the marine industry, but important pumping technology that ultimately has led us to be able to move in the food and beverage, which is important in moving water, and we've been able to take that technology, and if you get a chance later on today in some of the exhibits, you'll see some of that innovation that we talk about that we want to take our technology that was used in a different end market, different industry, and be able to help at the most rural area help farmers who want to irrig irrigate their crop. And with very simple technology, helping them be able to produce a larger field of crop, potentially be able to bring more wealth into their families, if nothing else, be able to maybe make some money by sharing that equipment with their neighbor, and have less time out in the field and being able to get the education for their children and, and letting their children go back to school. So we're trying to look at it while we play in a very premium performance play in the market. We're also saying, how can we start at the very bottom and work with NGOs and thinking about just different business partnerships that we can actually help those that are in need. And it also does one thing that I think is critically important. It energizes and it really creates that inspiration that our employees need to come in and try something new. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. The other area right here in Massachusetts is we actually, when we are uh, getting ready to spin the company in 2010, as Chris mentioned in my introduction, is my belief is we were a strong pumping company. We got into the early 2000s into treatment, critically important to move water, to treat it, to take that wastewater, be able to treat it, and responsibly bring it back into the industry. But analytics is absolutely critically important. More and more contamination in the water to be able to detect, but not only detect, but to monitor and be able to give that information to your customers so they can make real-time decisions and they can actually improve their processes. They can actually fix the problems. And we saw that as a great business in itself. And so we acquired Boston Homegrown Nova Analytics, which was a good company that had acquired several companies. And Chris and his team um, came in, inside of ITT at the time, but now part of Xylem, and their entrepreneurship and their ability to help us think differently and try something new and exciting, using that real data and information to think about our technology in a different way has made us a completely different company. So I'm thrilled about you know, what we have right here in this area. And I think that comes from the strong talent we can actually get in the region, the resources that the Commonwealth gives us, and that support and engagement in the industry around here that I believe will keep us innovating and keeping us solving the world's issues around water. We use the name Xylem. Why Xylem? It's a classic Greek. Um, it's moving water um, in a plant, which we felt was important as engineers in what we do. Having that engineering terminology was important to us. But we also use a tagline that is also very fitting, not only internally, but externally, and it's let's solve water. And we chose let's solve water because when you look at a big, large company like we had been, just under $4 billion, you have your own silos, you have your own comp competition for resources, um, you have your own brands, and a lot of times you don't work together. By us now thinking of ourselves as a common company around water, it's really brought down the barriers. And so internally, it's around let's solving water. But it's also as much of an external call to this industry at large to say, let's us work together. We cannot be experts in everything. And we talk about the issues around water, whether they're you know, rural areas that don't have any infrastructure, or right here, the aging infrastructure that were built many, many years ago for a lot lower population that is aging that needs to be addressed. The issues of climate change that we're seeing with flood control that needs to be put in place. We need to think about how we can come together. And this is a very fragmented market. We all know the water industry. You know, you've got groundwater regulations, you've got wastewater regulations, you've got you know, different, different end markets in which we serve, residential, public utilities, industrial, they all need different applications. We play in a high premium performance. 
we don't necessarily have the best value, low cost price. In some cases, that's exactly what some of our customers need. But we have a phenomenal channel to the market and we have phenomenal brands that are well known. And so we can help small startup companies, universities working with them and saying, here's the pain points of what our customers are dealing with and help get that started and bringing that technology into the marketplace. And that's where this collaboration and innovation as one industry working together rather than competing against each other, and good competition's good, but working together to get the focus of this industry is absolutely the challenge that we have in front of us, the opportunity that we have to change it as leaders in this industry, and in my mind, an absolutely responsible um, action that we've got to step up to. We want to have water for future generations. I know I grew up loving water, being able to go swim in it. I want it for my health. I ultimately want it for you know, productive industry, but I also want to be able to enjoy it. And that means we've got to protect it. And that means we all have got to play together. And so that's what I'm thrilled about, what this opportunity brings together. A couple of things that uh, I'd mention, you know, where we play, I mentioned we're in transport, treatment, and test. And so you can see our equipment many, many notable places around the world. You know, simple things like uh, when you go to the, the World Trade Center and you've got the beautiful ponds there in, in the uh, remembrance of 9-11. The pumps that are, that are feeding the water there are ours. We take a lot of pride in the fact that, you know, we can actually help in a situation like that. You know, you can go ultimately to, um, you know, to, to uh, Dubai where you've got the largest building um, in the world and it's our pumps that are ultimately moving water up and down and heating and ventilating um, those buildings with district cooling and so forth. So we play in lots of different applications. And there's not a place that you wouldn't go where you wouldn't see our wastewater um, pumps helping make sure that the wastewater is getting safely removed, brought into a wastewater treatment facility where our equipment now is treating that and making sure that it's tested, it's efficient, it's reducing energy and moving it away and, re and actually bringing it back to the environment um, safely or ultimately being reused. And our analytic equipment there is ultimately detecting and telling us whether we need to make a change in real time and allowing us to get more energy efficient solutions regularly, which I think is critically important as we go forward. So we play in a number of key areas. And I think that strength has allowed us to think about it differently. You don't think about it in just one aspect. You think about that whole cycle of water. And that's how we need to think about the issue. Because we can't just think about wastewater. We can't just think about clean water. We just can't think about groundwater. We've got to integrate that together to find the overall solution. And that's where we play. You know, I would say, um, as I mentioned, the one point water that I think a lot of times we lose fact of is a lot of times we're talking here to water industry in the public utility. We need to bring industry in that ultimately uses water as the raw material to their products that they're selling. Or ultimately, you know, um, companies take the pharma um, area where they actually, you know, are concerned about the wastewater that the drugs that all of us want to make sure that we're healthy and we can live longer that makes sure that that's not going to cause a health problem downstream. Saves me, but it hurts someone else downstream. How do we get them engaged in being part of adapting technology so that we are addressing this together? And it's important to them. They're for profit. They want to ultimately reduce their cost. They ultimately want to have a strong reputation. And I think times are changing today than where they were before. Um, many, of those, many of you who may go to uh, Davos, I have not gone, but I know over the last many years, water was in the top 10 list of issues. This last year, it's within the top two issues of industry leaders. And almost every top industry company, public company, in their C-suite has a sustainability leader. Making decisions in terms of where they can have responsible actions they're taking, not just about energy, about their water footprint, about making sure that they're making their communities better than when they left them or for the future generations. And so we have an opportunity where we play to take that nexus of water, which is absolutely essential for growing an economy. So whether we're talking about energy, whether we're ultimately talking about labor, whether we're talking about capital, whether we're talking about food, it doesn't come together if you don't have water. And so we've got to think about how we bring all the parties together to address this. 
and ultimately bring that innovative solution and help them have the courage to adopt that new technology. And so we talked last evening about the opportunity to be able to use some of the public utilities here to test bed technology. What a phenomenal opportunity to be able to demonstrate and show it does work in a real test bed, our technology. And so it gives leaders who want to do the right thing, but they also want to make sure that the services are provided in a safe, reliable way, an opportunity to make sure that technology works. So again, I think this cluster coming together with the right government, public interest, private interest, universities coming together and using that technology and demonstrating it works, works extremely, extremely well. And I think the other area that I think is absolutely important, and we've spent a lot of time at Xylem trying to drive this, and that is, what is water worth? No one thinks about what it costs to be able to bring clean water and remove that waste water from our homes. We take it for granted, especially in the developed markets. How many times have you turned on the tap and you didn't have water? Not many times, correct? So what we need to do is really do education. We did some, some um, studies. We actually, in 2010, and then we repeated this survey in 2012, we went out to 1,000 registered voters, and we asked them what they thought about the water infrastructure, and were they willing to pay more, and whose role was it and responsibility to help fix this issue. What we found in this survey was that the American public, and this was all demographics, all areas over the US, different political um, positions, it had a, a, a really good cross-section. And once they learned about what's happening with our water infrastructure, they all said they would be willing to pay more money each month to make sure they had a healthy supply of water to their home. And they were kind of astonished by some of the data points. They take it for granted in terms of what's happening. Now, if we took them up when it was somewhere in the order of $7 more a month that they each would pay, we assume they would pay it, you put that money, it actually matches what we're putting in the water industry today. That says something. Now, would they all pay it? You know, it's a data point. But I think the point is, with education, awareness, real data, people are willing to do the right thing. And when you do that and you can adopt technology, that brings more competition, more quick adapt adoption of technology, and it feeds on itself. Look at, the, you know, look at the cell phone industry today. It's constantly changing because there's a need and there's adoption of it and they want to keep up. If we can bring that same technology and ideas and innovation, this industry is ripe for technology. And my hope is we can attract the young talent coming out of the colleges and universities who have the courage to say, it's not okay just to say no. I'm going to change the way we do it. I'm not going to go through the vertical ways that it was done before. I'm going to put an idea on the table, and I want to really change it. So I think it's up to us to figure out how we change so that we can attract them to come into this industry, because they can change it. The market is different. We've got to make sure we're accountable. We've got to be safe, because our health is dependent upon it. But we've got to be willing to take a little bit of risk that's calculated risk, and I think we can win. So I think, again, my point is, we're coming together, we've got partnerships, we've got talent that wants to be a player. We all got into this industry or the various industries that eventually led us into water because we wanted to make a difference. We were passionate about it and the fact that you can bring an industry and you can make a good business out of it, but you can also marry that greater purpose of doing good, to me brings that extra energy that you bring each day to work, day in and day out, to say, wow, I work in a very important place. I can change the world, and people are depending on me. So my last point to all of us is, let's not forget the opportunity that we have. We're in a great point in time to be able to change things. We've seen climate change hitting us. We've seen the aging infrastructure. And we all know the technology and information and innovation is out there. It's a matter of marrying it together, adopting it, adapting it, and letting it come to life, and really creating that future urban infrastructure that, to me, looks so very different than what we have today. So enjoy your day. I'm excited to be a part of it, and I look forward to working with all of you.